My dad just delivered my birthday loo. I've come to the conclusion I don't have room for the loo currently on my work table. So gonna have to rectify that before we start messing around with the loom. And we'll have to think of a name for her because I'm not leaving it as Amelia. Horrible, no, we're not naming her that. Anyway, look at her. I can finally use the linen that I bought. Did I ask for this loom just so I could use up balls of linen? No, no further questions will be taken. Good day. Well, hello, we're already learning that I will have to change my filming setup if you would like to see any of this because you being one foot away from the table on the little swing arm is not gonna work out so well for this. So this very intimidating object is the Glymacra, if I'm saying it wrong, I'm, I, I think it's Glymacra, it's from Sweden. Uh, they make much more complex looms, but specifically the reason I chose this is because it has metal paws. I'm being quite serious about that. I just don't see anything that should be done that involves tensioning that would not be on a metal pawl. Um, Sorry you're listening to my dryer. That's just the way it goes. People have to do their laundry. Anyway, we are to this point of this wildly unhelpful explanation chart. And we will be attaching our uh, tie-on bars to each of the cloth beams so that we can warp this thing. And I think that uh, the warp length from like this work table to my tanker desk that's heavy enough to put the clamp on to wind the, the warps in the way that we're supposed to is like barely long enough to even be worth it to warp. So I'll probably end up warping it in another room for the next time. But I wanna just try it first with just one heddle and then we'll move on to two heddles. But first I have to cut, this is apparently a, a, a special cord called Texolve, which I think that they use this for making uh, sheds, like you would use this as a, a, a reed, like an, in, a, in a big complex uh, floor loom. We are not going to do that. We have to cut 14 inch pieces, melt the ends with fire, so there's already fire involved in the ownership of this object, uh, and then sh shove them through the hole, and then shove them through another around these. Why do they just leave the holes naked? What are the naked holes for? Those don't get tied to anything. Nowhere do you show anything tied to those naked random holes on that beam. Oh, they're there. It's for when you're, it's for when, well, sorry, that's on me. It's for when you're warping it to hold it on to here and hold this on so that you can warp through it, but then also it's even, like it's parallel and it's under tension. All right, I'm working it out. I like to learn organically, so I've got to cut these and then set them on fire and then I'll be back.
Well, hello. I had to evacuate literally everything I own and an entire Calico Critter treehouse to get it onto the table, let alone anything else. But very cleverly designed. We got we got these both on here now, and uh, I realized after I had installed them both that there is a front one and a back one. They didn't label that. They did not note that anywhere. It was not in the instructions. But one is uh, short and can get rolled up on this down here, which you can barely see, and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> it's a little awkward. Um, this one is shorter than that one. I don't exactly know. I, I don't. Anyway, it's it's like an inch in difference, and it wouldn't roll up on the front, so I had to trade them out. Now it rolls up. Uh, this tech solve stuff was very cool. First time using that, and because I don't want to um, learn how to use two heddles as the, my first experience with this, we're going to double up our linen, which needs 20 to 22 dents per inch, which means we would use two 10 dent per inch heddles at the same time, um, or we would double over our fiber. We're going to double over our fiber. That's how we're going to have to do that. So we're going to do that. And I don't, I don't, I'm a little nervous about the whole thing, but we're going to do real warping, which is when we will be putting uh, one, well, you can put as many colors as you want. We'll start with one. We put a ball back here and we tie it onto the warp. I've got an extra reed down here we don't need. So then we tie it onto the warp and then we grab it with the, the hooky doodle this, the reed hook, heddle, hook, it's a hook. We're going to grab that and we're going to pull it through in a loop through here. Well, that's, that doesn't go through there very easily at all. I feel like we could do better. Anyway, they should make this out of a thinner piece of metal. That's my advice. Uh, we're going to pull it all the way out and then we're going to go all the way across to my desk on the other side of the room. It's a good, it's a good seven feet that I can probably get out of it. Um, and we're going to stretch it out and then we drop it around the, the, the peg. This is, pretend my hand is my desk over there. We're going to drop the loop around the peg and then we leave that there. Walk all the way back, grab the next loop out of here, pull it around this, walk it all the way over there, etc. Until we've done as much of the reed as we wish. I don't know how much that will be. And I don't know that I can get this one out now that I left it in there whilst I was tying this on. It might live there now, or I'll untie something. Um, but I'm going to uh, attempt to warp this like a grown adult and not do the kids warping like I've been doing. We're going to be brave. We're going to be strong together. Oh, also, cool thing. Um, the clamps, to get it on the table, space it out perfectly so that you have room to turn your, your paw over there. Come on, camera, you can do it. Reach with your tiny arm so you can you can get it from there. Mm -hmm. And then these are a 90 degree grabber and you get quite a lot of room. I could put it on a much thicker table. So that's very much on there. I could take the whole cabinet with it. But all right, we're going to try to be brave and do real warping. We're grown ups. We can do it. Go team. I have my three colors of linen, and I have what is s some sort of basic plaid, and then we would mimic that in, in the weaving that we will then do. Also have to remember that because I'm doubling this, that means I will have to double over the weft. So I'll have to account for that when I roll it up. Anyway, um, I'm going to begin. You'll only be able to see part of this, so I probably won't record all of it, but I've tied on the first one of these, and I'm not going to do the full width. I'm going to go to like here, I'm thinking. Anyway, um, so we start there and we bravely pull it through, and then I'm going to just walk this across the room, and this isn't scary for anyone, and we've been doing this for Tens of thousands of years, Erica, so there's no need to panic. Your, your ancestors did this, and they did it with considerably less technology than this. We can do it. All right. Um, I will sp speed this up from here on out. You don't need to watch me panic for the, at least not this long.
Okay, well, it only took me the better part of three hours, but uh, we're here. I will now unhook the pole in the back, roll this one up till it is also flat to the bar, tie it down, and then I think we'll actually be ready to weave, except that I have to make a bunch of um, shuttles because I want this to be an even weave, which means it will go six picks of blue, ten picks of that, or whatever, whatever the sequence is, you do that in the weft as well. And then it's a true plaid. Why I chose to do that for our first project, I don't know. Wish I could, uh, wish I could explain that, but here we are. I've gotten them as even as I can, and so we're going with it. And they particularly advertise that the Paul and the beam are so large on this that I don't need to roll up paper with it. Following instructions, not doing it wrong. Just to be clear. All right, what has rapidly come to my attention is um, that I don't have enough uh, shuttles that are of any size that go with this. We're going to try to even weave this so it will be six light blue, however many green. I have my little chart somewhere. But I'm going to, this is our first pick. I guess a pick is your, don't, don't be like that. I'm struggling a little. The top still feels a little bit loose to me, like the top of the shed, no matter how much I tighten it and no matter what I do. I've tried several different tightening things. Advice appreciated. But this is our first beat. And then I guess we go to about, I mean, I can't, I presume that they don't want you going beyond this bar because it's not wanting to go past the bar. So I guess we move that back up. <laughs> we go to the bar. Okay, and then we go to our up shed. Yeah, and then the bottom ones seem very loose. Is that normal on a rigid huddle loom? I don't know what I'm doing. So I couldn't tell you what's correct or not. I just wanted to put in a row of salvage stitches to make sure I'm doing this remotely correctly, which hopefully I am. And we'll hold that out and... Ooh. See, I've got it really tight, but it's like not um, consistently tight. <laughs> we'll work it out. We just have to learn how to use the fine lady. Okay. Yeah, it's just odd that all my top sheds are loose. Or bottom sheds, whichever one is not important at the moment. I don't know if it's because of the bend. I don't know that I can straighten the bend, to be honest. So we don't want it to fold in the edge. So we gotta leave room. Oh my god. And then we beat gently. And we're gonna take all the advice that we've gotten from other weavers, like let it kiss the yarn or whatever. Okay, almost there. And then we'll start with the big guys. Which will be easier because I won't be using this little tiny needle. We're using, I did order more, but they won't be here for a week, so. Sorry, we're going to have to be a little bit wonky for a week or so. Okay, we're holding it out so it doesn't make it smaller on one side. Ooh. I feel like something's too tight and something's too loose, but I don't know how to rectify that just yet in my skill level. I'll Google it next time I take a sitting break. All right, we have our first stitches or picks. I learned that fun new word, picks. Or a couple of picks in here. I'm gonna have to get used to this new motion. It's just different, it's not bad. See, that one was too loose. And then up, maybe that's just how it is. Feel free to comment if you know what my problem is, because my Top shed is either very tight or very loose. And my bottom shed is either very tight or very loose. <laughs> I think that means there's only a problem with one of them. But I don't know which and I don't know how to fix that. All right, so we have some base stitches in. Come off. Okay, we have something of a salvage. We're gonna leave those because we'll, we'll unwind them at the end, I presume. And now it is time for the big, the big in. All right, so we're gonna do six passes. 
I don't know that I like it this huge. Oh my God. I'm sure there's a reason that that's helpful, but right now it's scary. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. All right, so we're gonna do one. Ooh, I'm gonna do this, this first pick set with you. And then up and back across. Oh God. Okay, yeah, I don't know about this giant. I've got these all tangled up already. I don't know about the giant shuttle. That's a little wacky for me. I'm gonna have to get used to that. Well, I didn't buy that one exactly to replace it. Okay, so we don't want to leave too much room, but I've also never woven with linen, so... Eh. We beat. See, that seems like it's leaving too much slack. But I also probably could have done this at a smaller yarn, or a smaller ends per inch, like 12. But they were back ordered on that heddle. All right, down again, where we just up, down. Yeah, down. And then this again. This is all very new to me. This is my first real grown up yarn. <laughs> my first real grown up loom. Oh no. Why are you so loose on top? Why are you like this? I'm gonna have to Google that next. Because I don't understand. Okay, so then we have that one. And we don't want it too loose, but obviously we don't want it... See, it, it lays down so exactly. There we go. Down. Ugh. And then up. Again, failing to understand why my tightness is so wonkety. I will ask my Weaver Bird Facebook group, and they will probably know in an instant. Do not love the giant shuttle. At least not in this very enclosed space of my office. Up! Come off! And we smush and we kiss the weft together. Oh wait, no, we're now, now we're going down. This is just a very new motion to me. And this thing is huge. I feel like I should go cancel that order. I don't want another giant one. Stay with your brother. Why are you so loose on top? If it's supposed to be loose on top and I'm just dumb, well, that's on me, I guess. Okay, so that was one, two, three, four, five. So we're at five. And then this will be six. And then we're gonna switch to the green. This one. For I think 10. 10 picks. And then we go to the dark green. Okay. Well, we did it, y'all. We warped a real loom, and we're officially weaving on it. We did it, y'all. I'm proud of us. All right, I'm going to weave in these, I guess. We are, in fact, making fabric. Look. Look at it. It's linen. Very exciting. All right, I'll keep you updated as we keep working. Well, I can honestly say that we have learned to use the product. I am a little surprised by how tightly I'm having to crank it, and I'm wondering if that is due to the fact that this thin of a fiber is sometimes and usually recommended for using with a floor or a shaft loom where you can get the tensioning much more aggressive. However, this is aggressively uh, tight. You can almost, almost bounce something off of it. We are on our second 
repetition of the full pattern. The full pattern is technically from here to here. We have this repeating over here and this area in here was my freelance area where I wasn't following any particular rules. So it has a semi mirrored appearance on the fabric. I'm still kind of learning my best uses for it um, and getting used to like how I need to pull in the sides on the tension. I've had some tensioning learning issues. I don't know if maybe I needed to definitely warp it with the uh, paper or something because the linen is such a thin fiber. That's possible. Also, sometimes they recommend that you only weave some fibers that are really small on a floor or table loom. I'm assuming because you can get much more even and huge tensioning on it. However, I've got this very, very tight. It's not like it's easy for me to lift up and move it. So, but I've still got plenty of shed to get through. I did end up with just some like loose threads here and there, but again, we're on our second repeat and we're on our second portion of this pack of 10 right here. When I get to the end, I will have two full blocks of my uh, plaid or my tartan for my dad. And then I may uh, move on and try to do some warp floats. But I'll show off stuff that I make with this in a subsequent video. I just wanted to show you that she is all set up, our beautiful lady. Her current working name is Claire Loom because she's fancy. Petaluma is a bit of a ruffian. You'd find her out west. Claire Loom is fancy. She's Swiss. No, she's Swedish. I'm sorry. Not Swiss. Swedish. Anyway, um, I hope you'll stick around and see what nonsense I get up to with this thing as I learn how to use it better and Google tips and tricks for doing what I'm doing rather than learning quite so organically. It might actually help if I looked some stuff up. Anyway, I hope to see you in the next one, and I hope I've earned your like or subscribe today. I'm always trying something new. I don't know how you got here, but I'm glad you're here, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!